Okay, what we're doing is we're going over micro and macro evolution. I'm going to kind of go over kind of quick what micro and macro evolution is. So let me share my screen. All right, and um, and I'm going to do it kind of quick so that we can um, do that right here. So I'm sharing my screen. Let me pull this up right here. Okay. All right. Evolution is the change in a population or species over time. All right. There are two types of evolution right here. We're doing a microevolution, which is small scale evolution, evolution when a population or species that does not cause a new species to come about. So this is called microevolution. Evolution. All right. Uh, that does not cause a new species. And so micro means small, uh, does not. That does not cause a new species to come about. Just a change in the population, okay? It does not make a new species. Example was the peppered moth. If you remember when we watched the, the read the article on the peppered moth, uh, the pepper moth in the um, before the industrial revolution, there were gray and black, but the gray were more prevalent because the tree trunks were gray and they could camouflage and they wouldn't get eaten by birds. But when the industrial revolution came in this England towns um, that produced coal and uh, soot in the air and it got on the trees and made the trees turn black in color and that made the black ones better able to blend in where the gray one stood out. And um, and so therefore the black became more fit and they they were better able to survive and reproduce. The gray um, died out because they were spotted by the birds and eaten. And so they became more black in color in that population because the gray would get eaten more often uh, because uh, the tree trunks burned black and that made the black better stand out made the black moss not better stand out but better make the black moss better blend in all right um artificial selection artificial selection is where and again, so my, that's an example of microevolution. It did not make a new species. It just changed the population, all right? Artificial selection is where man uh, selects what individuals breed with what individuals, all right? Dog breeding produces a wide variety of dogs, okay? Uh, another type is also pigeon breeding, okay? Pigeon breeding, all right? Produces a wide variety of pigeons, and I'm going to show you a picture of that, a wide variety of pigeons. But they're all still the same species. I mean, they can still breed together. All right. Dog breeding is another type of artificial selection, which produces a wide variety of different dogs. All right. Dogs are all the same species. That means they can reproduce with each other. All right. Um, and so going back over to here, all right, so let me get this one here. Um, and let me pull this up. All right, evolution. All right, pigeons. Do I have anything on pigeons? Pigeon, pigeon, pigeons, pigeons. All right. All right, here are the different uh, pigeons. These are all the same species and they came from the common rock pigeon, the common rock pigeon. And so these are all the same species. But if you look and you said, uh, you say um, pigeon, and you say, well, what's a pigeon? Here is a pigeon in case you're not sure what a pigeon looks like. All right, there's your pigeon right here. That's a pigeon. But all these over here, are special breeds of pigeons. They're still all the same species. It's almost like dogs. Like you can breed dogs, well, you can also breed pigeons. And some people do different white ways so they can have them. Some people like to have certain type of pigeons at their wedding. 
uh, to like to for the bride as they walk away. Uh, but there's other different types. And so these are all different types of pigeons. Okay. And they can be bred to have specific types. Same thing with um with uh, dogs. Like and again, but again, the point is is that they are all considered the same species. So that's what we're trying to emphasize with that. Uh, pharma select seeds from best plants and replant them. Another example, these are all micro evolution. They do not make a new species. Farmers select seeds from the best plants and replant them. They um, also uh, use the pollen from the best plant to fertilize flowers of other plants that produce a better crop. Examples are tomatoes and corn. Okay, and so an example of that, so I'm going to pull this up. All right. Uh, evolution. Let me get to uh, uh, agriculture. All right. Uh, tomatoes once looked something like this. Okay. They were more like berries. But over through farmers selecting usually the best plants to reproduce, maybe they say, okay, we only want to use the one that has um, the biggest tomatoes or the ones that last long, so the best tasting ones. They started getting bigger and larger and lasting longer. And so they selected which traits they wanted. And then they used their seeds and planted them. Or they used their pollen to pollinate the other flower here. Right, and so tomatoes grew up into what we know them as of today. But again, tomatoes don't look something like this before. All right, the same thing with corns. Corn had was a lot smaller, had less seeds. And uh, now, again, for farmers selecting which uh, corn gets to reproduce, they were better able to um, reproduce with corn and get the desired modern corn that we have today. Um, and so you can see the different corn seeds here in the corn. So they planted the ones that gave them more seeds. So they say, okay, I want the one that had more seeds. So we're going to plant this one. And so they helped select, this is called artificial selection where man selects the, the best traits and the desired traits. And so, and the population of corn now is more like this than it was like these here. All right. So the first types of corn were more like this, all right? Um, but again, they're still the same species. So this is called microevolution. It's a change in a population or species that does not cause a new species. All right, macroevolution. Macroevolution is macro is the opposite of micro. So it is large scale evolution, large scale evolution. Evolution in a population of species that produces a new species to be formed is called, is going to be macroevolution. Uh, human species evolution, right? Um, human species evolution here. Um, uh, human species, blank, blank, evolving into human age species here. So an ape-like ancestor an ape-like ancestor involving to human ape species. Now those are two different species. This is macroevolution. So when we see we talk about uh, how humans evolved from an ape-like ancestor, that's that would be an example of macroevolution because those are different species. They are not the same species. Another example is Darwin's finches, one species of finch evolving into the many different species of finch on the Galapagos Islands, into the many different species of finches on the Galapagos Islands. All right, and so let me give you that picture here and so you can understand what we're saying here. All right. Let 
All right, I'm trying to find it. So be patient for a second. I'm about to have it. All right, I don't see it on here. Let me just pull this up. Darwin's benches. All right, so there we are. I like this picture. This is the one I wanted. All right, and so when I look at this picture, all right, uh, this picture is, what is it trying to show here? Here it is. What is this picture trying to show? These are all different finch species. And what it's trying to show is that they all came from a common ancestor. They all came from a common ancestor. Okay, that's what this is trying to show. All right. And so it's not all these are not all different species. These are all came from one common ancestor. Um, and so that's what we're trying to show with that. Okay. And so that's, you see all these different spe finch species, that's their name. And that means they don't breed with each other. They're different finch species, but they all had a common ancestor. This would be another example of macro evolution. Okay. This is macro evolution. All right. Um, humans evolving uh, from an ape-like ancestor. Ape-like ancestor to humans, right? And so this is this idea right here of humans evolving from apes. This is would be an example of of. Uh, macro evolution again this would be an example of macro evolution this is not and again this does not happen over a short period of time it happens over very long periods of time all right um blank is the process uh where populations of one species become so different that they can no longer reproduce with each other resulting in a new species this is called speciation Speciation. They become so different that they can no longer reproduce. Hello. Hey, Dad. Hey, how's it going? We're about to leave. Where are you going to go? Going home. Oh, you're about to go home. Who's we? I'm about to go. They're about to drive me back off of the van. Okay. Well, did you? What happened to your phone? I put it in the car because we were on the wall. I did that. Okay, so we're just checking to see how you're doing. That's all I'm trying to do, and just seeing how you're doing. But you're coming home now. Yeah. Okay. Did you have a good time? Yeah. Tired. Nice. You're tired. Well, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. All right. Well, let me let you go. Okay. All right. Bye. All right. Bye. All right, macroevolution takes long periods of time. It takes long periods of time. We have never witnessed macroevolution. We have never witnessed any macroevolution. And so that's the deal with that. All right, bacteria evolution. All right, uh, bacteria um, like Staphylococcus aureus and Neisseria gonorrhea are almost now always resistant to benzyl penicillin. This is which type of, of, of uh, evolution. So let's look over here. We're gonna look at evolution again. All right, uh, bacteria and antibodies diagram. This is what I want. All right, we're gonna use this picture right here. Find it. Here it is. All right. And so here is our bacterial cell. All right. And so with our bacterial cell, you can see there, here are antibodies that are attacking it. And antibodies you can get from an antibiotic. Okay. And they will attack it and destroy this bacterial cell. That's what they'll attach to it. They'll attach to a specific uh, antigen on the outside of the bacterial cell. And that will allow it to destroy it. 
All right, if the bacterial cell was able to just change its antigens, right, to where the antibodies could not get it, uh, would that be a good thing for bacteria or for a bad thing for bacteria? That'd be a good thing for bacteria. It'd be a bad thing for us, but it'd be a good thing for bacteria because it would allow the bacteria to be able to better survive and reproduce. So this is called uh, ba uh, bacteria become antibiotic resistant. All right. And so it didn't make a new species. So this would be an example of microevolution. Because it did not make a new species. It happened because of a change in the bacteria, a change because of a mutation in the bacteria's DNA. So these little changes can allow that. Whale evolution. Uh, whales are thought to evolve from a four-legged mammal that walked on land uh, into what we have whales today. All right, and so here's what I mean by that, all right? All right, here is whale evolution. So you can see whales right down here. I'm going to go out if I can. All right. And so this happened over millions and millions of years. Are all these organisms the same species? They are not. All right. And so all these organisms are different species. And this is what is thought to be the whale evolution. And so... This produced many different species and happened over many, 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 many generations and over a very, very long time where organisms became better suited to their environment to produce the whale. And again, over very long periods of time here. Um, and so, and they're saying that one of the closest relatives of whales is hippopotamus, a hippopotamus. They have a similar ancestor back um, about 55 million years ago. All right, and so let's go back over here. So the evolution from Pachycetus, which was one of the four-legged animals, uh, to killer whales is a type of macroevolution or microevolution? It is type of macroevolution. All right, how all life has changed from unicellular organisms to its vast diversity of organisms, unicellular and multicellular that we have today. This is an example of, that's again, macroevolution. Again, how we have all the different species, that is definitely macroevolution. The evolution of corn in agriculture is a type of, it didn't make a new species, so that's going to be microevolution, right? The evolution of hominids, humans, chimpanzees, gorillas, and orangutans from an ancestor species is a type of macroevolution. It did not, it made different species. If, if they can't reproduce with each other, that is a different species. Mites and other insects developing resistance to pesticides. Do they make a new species? No, it's just they're becoming resistant to that. That is going to be micro evolution. All right, so those are your notes. Um, and that's all I have for you here today. So let's go ahead and do that.